here along the Gulf Coast, a team of scientists is about to launch an innovative and multifaceted experiment. They are preparing two research vessels for a month-long cruise to locations near the site of the 2010 oil spill. Their goal is to test new equipment designed to predict where the wind, waves, and currents of the Gulf would take surface oil after a major blowout. If successful, the information could improve the response to future oil spills, saving the coastal marshes or even the Barataria Bay dolphins from further harm. Eric DeSaro is the chief scientist on the cruise. Oh, yeah, okay. It's a little crazy, but you know, we, we've done this a lot of times. It'll just happen. People are all working at their sort of pace, their problems, and then they try to solve them. I'm not terribly worried about it. We got a lot of different teams coming together here at the last day. Everybody's here from University of Washington, British Columbia, Scripps. The purpose of our cruise is to look at how oil might spread in a future oil spill, so where it goes, because that really matters. People care whether it goes to where they are, and so um, knowing where it goes is a big deal, because if you don't know where the oil is going to go, then it's hard to prepare people and set up the cleanup, things like that. Tamayos Gokman is responsible for the entire operation. It took us an entire year to prepare for this cruise, mainly because we didn't have the equipment uh, needed to carry out the measurements. The team has brought with them a new generation of a device called a drifter, a mechanism that floats with ocean currents while transmitting data like location, speed, and water temperature. This is a really, really great chance for us to push science forward. If you don't have science to help you uh, make quantitative decisions, then you have to essentially guess. A lot of things can go wrong. Probably the biggest problem is weather. And that is exactly what happens. You've got this huge mass of weather in the Gulf. We'll probably have gale force winds for a time, so don't even think about boating tomorrow morning. By the time the two research vessels reach their drifter deployment site, the weather has turned. We've been deciding what to do about the weather, and we're not going to risk it because there's too much potential for damaging equipment. Meanwhile, we can get some of our equipment tested and then just wait. But then some good news. The weather forecast changes. By sunrise, the seas will be much calmer. The team seizes the opportunity and starts assembling the drifters for a morning deployment. Brian House specializes in the use of satellites to track ocean currents. These contain a GPS on this board. So every five minutes, it'll update its position to the satellite, which will send the data back to our server at the University of Miami. In the end, we're going to have to build 200 drifters. The other boat is going to be building 800. The work continues through the night, even during times of heavy wind and rain. And when the team does take a break, it's not long before they're called back to work. Look at that back deck, boys. Five minutes to the top. Squall is coming through, so it's going to be wet on the deck. Not the most comfortable, but it's workable. By morning, the skies are clear, but the seas are still rough. Deploying the drifters is still on hold. 